So we're doing proof by induction here, partial sums. That means just adding up some amount of a sequence, not adding it up to infinity, just this much. Uh, a couple of worked examples here. So we're going to jump straight into it. Prove 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus n equals n bracket n plus 1 over 2 for n is greater than or equal to 1. A lot of people just gloss over this bit, but it's really important because sometimes you'll do a partial sum where it only works for some amount, or sometimes you'll do some other uh, proof where it only works for some n values. In this case, 1 or greater. All right, so our first step here is to do the basis step. We're going to test to see if this works for the first value, in this case, for n equals 1. All right, so you'll remember this is called the proposition Pn. We're going to test that it's true for P1. So the left-hand side of this equation is just going to be 1 plus nothing else, just 1. Okay, what about the uh, right-hand side of this equation? It's going to be equal to whatever that is. So 1 bracket 1 plus 1 over 2. That's going to be equal to 1 times 2 over 2, which is going to be equal to 1. All right. Um, that means that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, so we can say that it is true for P1. So now that we know that it's true for P1, we get started on the inductive step. Now, in the inductive step, we assume it's true for n equals k, so there's some k value for which it's true. We assume that. And we prove that if that's true, then it would also be true for k plus 1. Assume true for n equals k, prove true for n equals k plus 1. And now this is where we take our left-hand side and our right-hand side and break them up. So left-hand side is going to be equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 k plus the next term k plus 1. And the right-hand side is this thing here. And in the right-hand side, we're going to substitute directly k plus 1 for n k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. All right, so that bit there refers to the n there, all over 2. Okay, and now we need to use some algebraic manipulation to prove that this and this are the same. All right, and here's the trick. The bit that kind of I get confused with sometimes when I'm doing this stuff is to understand that in the left-hand side, there's usually going to be, or there's always going to be, some sort of portion here that you can replace with something that you assumed earlier. Now, you assumed that it was true for n equals k, which means that you're assuming that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus k is equal to that, but with k's instead of n's. So we can replace all of that with k bracket k plus 1 over 2. So that is that. We assumed that. Plus k plus 1. Okay, and you can see that they're getting a little bit similar. And you've really got to decide here, well, what should I work on? Uh, now, this is more complicated than that. You can see this one's all over 2. So maybe I should make this one all over 2, and maybe that'll make them look similar. Now, I can do that by just putting a 2 on the bottom, multiplying top and bottom of this fraction by 2. So now I get 2 times k plus 1 over 2. And now bringing those together. All right, so I've brought all of that together as all over 2. You can see I just moved my right-hand side over there because I'm going to have to move my left-hand side and continue working on it out here because I'm going to run out of space. Okay, now, uh, just before you get moving, just make sure you keep looking at the right-hand side looking at the left-hand side and saying, am I getting close yet? Well, everything's over 2, so that's good. Now, uh, what would this look like if I expanded it? Uh, so I'm just going to expand those brackets and expand those brackets. All right, so I've expanded those brackets here. I have k squared plus k plus 2k plus 2. Now, obviously, that's k squared plus 3k plus 2 over 2. And you've got two options here. Uh, you could look at k squared plus 3k plus 2 and say, well, that's a quadratic. Maybe I can factorize it and make it into a pair of brackets. Um, or maybe I should just leave that alone and instead start working on this right-hand side and see if I can make it look like that. Uh, I think I'm going to start working on the right-hand side because I don't want to factorize. So this is going to be k plus 1 
bracket k plus 2 over 2. And then I wonder what that looks like if I expand it. k squared plus k plus 2k plus 2 all over 2. Okay, uh, and then k plus 2k, well that's 3k. So I'm just going to put those together. Done. Done. Left hand side looks like that. Right hand side looks like that. I'm really done here. Now there is a really pedantic thing that most math teachers probably want you to write at the end here, and I'm going to include myself in that, I guess. Um, now, this is what your page looks. This is what your page looks like. The thing I'm going to write here goes right down the bottom once everything's done. All right, you don't have to write final statement, but you should write this bit. If true for pk, also true for pk plus one. That's what this stuff did. If it's true for pk, then it's also true for pk plus 1. It's true for p1. So if it's true for p1, it's true for the next thing, which is p2. It's true for the next one, which is p3. We get that domino effect happening. And then we write, therefore, true for n is greater than or equal to 1. Now, you might just need to like remember exactly what this statement is. Because in any partial sum, or pretty much in any proof by induction, you're going to be writing a statement that looks almost identical to that. Uh, I'm going to do another one of these, just so you can see that they are like they are really formulaic. You do those steps over and over. So new question here. I've kept this little bit of wording here because I'll use it again. Uh, now, I'm using summation notation this time, and there's a 50-50 chance you'll, get, you'll have to use summation notation in these sorts of questions. So this says the sum of all 2 to the n numbers is equal to 2 to the n plus 1 minus 2. So what do they mean by all of the 2 to the n numbers starting at 1? Well, 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 2 plus 2 to the 3 plus 2 to the 4. Da -da 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 -da. Now, uh, this would be equal to, this exact sum would be equal to 2 to the... 4 plus 1, so 2 to the 5, minus 2. Or at least that's what this thing is telling us. So, first of all, let's do the basis step. Prove that it's true for n is greater than or equal to 1. So let's prove that it's true for 1. Now, for 1, we're just on the left-hand side, it's going to be 2 to the 1. 2 to the 1 plus, well, nothing, because that's just the first one. So 2 to the 1 is 2. What about the right-hand side? It's going to be equal to 2 to the 1 plus 1, minus 2 which is 2 to the 2 minus 2, which is 4 minus 2, which is 2. Okay, left-hand side, right-hand side, so we can say that it's true for P1. So there's our first step. You can mark for that. All right, let's do the inductive step. Assume it's true for N equals K. Prove true for N equals K plus 1. So let's write out the formula for K plus 1. Now I'm going to stick with my summation notation here. So really think about what I'm writing. Uh, summation up to k from r equals 1. So starting at 1 and getting to k, we get 2 to the k. Now, we've assumed that that is equal to um, that there, 2k plus 1 minus 2. But I'm trying to figure out k plus 1. So I'm going to have to add on, on top of that, the plus, the next term. So plus... 2 to the k plus 1. So all of that bit there is my left hand side is equal to that. Now what about my right hand side? Well I'm not going to make that mistake again so I'm going to write it way over here. My right hand side is equal to this but with k plus 1 substituted directly in for n. So it's going to be 2 to the k plus 1 plus 1 minus 2. Okay, and my job is to make sure that I can prove that that and that are the same. All right, so first of all, let's look at this little bit here. It's messy. I don't know how that's going to end up looking like that, except for the fact that I already assumed that this is true for n equals k, that this formula is true for n equals k. And you can see that this bit here looks the same as that bit there, except with a k instead of an n. So I can say that that is equal to that with a k instead of an n. So we have 2 to the k plus 1 minus 2, and that's that bit there, that bit there. 
plus 2 to the k plus 1. This looks way more manageable now because now I just need to prove that that and that uh, are the same. Okay, so let's look at this side for a second. 2 to the k plus 1 plus 1, that's stupid. Let's write it as 2 to the k plus 2 minus 2. Okay, let's look at this bit here. 2 to the k plus 1 plus 2 to the k plus 1. Huh. That's like two lots of 2 to the k plus 1, right? So like if it was like x squared plus x squared, that would be 2x squared. Not that I need the brackets there, it would just be 2x squared. So this is two lots of 2 to the k plus 1. Two lots of 2 to the k plus 1. So that's that bit there and that bit there. And what's left over is this minus 2 on the end. Okay, so 2 times 2 to the k plus 1. That's 2 to the 1, right? And if I know my index laws, 2 to the 1 times 2 to the k plus 1, I use my first index law to add those indices together, and I'll get 2 to the k plus 2 minus 2. Left hand side, right hand side, and get rid of that, and we can write our final statement there, which remember would appear down here somewhere. If it was true for pk, it would also be true for pk plus 1, that's what our inductive step shows. It is true for p1, that's what our basis step shows, therefore it's true for n is greater than or equal to 1 because of our little domino idea. Okay, those were two proof by induction partial sums. You should be able to see that it's fairly uh, formulaic. Do your basis step, set up your left hand side and right hand side, substitute what you assumed, and then start working.